Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I was scrolling through Facebook the other day and I came across a post which I'm going to share with you on the screen now. In this post, a woman writes, Please help. I'm tired of feeling tired, no motivation, no energy. Which kind of lab tests should I ask the doctor to run? And in reading that, I realized if there was one person asking this question, there were probably hundreds, if not thousands of other people out there really wondering what are the basic lab tests that need to be run in order to get a handle on what's going on with someone's fatigue. So I decided to make a video to address this very question. My name is Scott Resnick. I'm a physician and I'm trained in a particular type of medicine known as functional medicine, in which we as doctors have really trained ourselves to ask different questions about what's driving our body's physiology. I'm sharing some of that training and thinking with you today in this video. I'm making these videos because I think you're really smart and I think you want to take control of your health and these videos are intended to give you the tools, tips, and the techniques to make some good clinical decisions. So in this video, you'll have a good understanding of the baseline labs that need to be obtained at your doctor's office and why they're important. What I want to do is I want to start with basically um, a first tiered approach to the laboratory testing and then through the course of the video start to investigate other different levels of laboratory testing that start to diverge from sort of our conventionally accessed medical tests to give insight into what's causing your fatigue. So let's begin at the beginning, right? Um, probably the first basic studies that any uh, doctor is going to test are known as a CBC and a CMP. Those stand for a complete blood count and a complete metabolic panel. And these are basic studies. I mean, I think at lab or, uh, LabCorp or Quest, these are going to be $15 worth of lab tests. A CBC looks at different components of the cells in the blood. It looks at the white blood, cell, white blood cell count, which is a good measure of whether there might be a covert infection in the body. Uh, it also looks at some markers that give some insight into our B vitamin status, namely a marker on that test known as an MCV. And finally, what a CBC with a differential does is it breaks down the distribution of the different immune cells in our body and gives us some insight as to whether your immune system is being attracted to a viral, bacterial, or maybe even a fungal, fungal process. The next important study that should be obtained at everyone's doctor's office is what's known as a CMP, or a complete metabolic panel. Now, this is a study that looks at different nutritional markers. It looks at sodium, potassium, and calcium. It also looks at our protein stores, and finally, it looks at our liver function tests. So really, this is a test of nutritional markers. Perhaps my favorite study, and the one that should be done by anybody who is struggling with some degree of fatigue, is what's known as a high-sensitivity C-reactive protein, or an HSCRP, and this is a marker of inflammation. Now, a high CRP is going to be a number that's something like 6 or 8 or 10, and this is often associated with a chronic inf ongoing infection or a pretty significant autoimmune process. When I start seeing elevated CRPs in maybe the 3 to 5 range, that is often associated with somebody who is in a pre-diabetic state or maybe has some extra weight. An optimal HSCRP is less than 1, but 1 to 3 is considered the normal range. The next super important test that I like to obtain in all of my patients is something known as a homocysteine. Now, there are very few conventional doctors that are measuring this, but this is something that is easily accessed through Quest or LabCorp. Homocysteine effectively reflects two things. One is the B vitamin status, particularly B6, B9, and B12 in our body. But more importantly, homocysteine reflects a process known as methylation. And I'm not going to get into the science here, but just know that methylation is an important step that helps us to activate our neurotransmitters, it helps us to detoxify, and it also helps to activate our, our DNA. And so homocysteine, when it's elevated, reflects poor methylation. A normal homocysteine in men and women is usually less than 8 to 10. I can tell you that mine is elevated and I need to take activated B vitamins in order to bring it down. The next critical set of tests that need to be done for anybody suffering with fatigue is a full thyroid study. And the good introductory thyroid test is a TSH and a free T3 and a free T4. TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone and free T3 and free T4 are the free hormones. This is reflecting what our cells are seeing in terms of thyroid hormone being made by the thyroid gland. Now I did a video, I think it's up here, 
not too long ago that really gets into these hormones. So if you're interested in thyroid function, I'd recommend that you check it out. The next study that I do in all my patients is measure what's known as a red blood cell, magnesium, and zinc. Now I wanna caution you that a lot of labs will do serum levels of zinc and magnesium and these are not adequate. So be sure to ask for these by name, red blood cell, magnesium, and zinc. Why are these important? It turns out that the ions, magnesium and zinc, are involved in some 600 different chemical reactions in the body. And we are deficient in these nutrients across the board. So it's estimated that about 50% of the people in this country are magnesium deficient. And the World Health Organization has issued a statement that says that a full third of the world's population is deficient in zinc. So where are you? The last study that I want to recommend to be done as sort of like an introductory baseline level is measuring something called an omega-3 index. Now this is not a study that's typically done by most doctors, but I can tell you that both LabCorp and Quest offer this panel. The omega-3 index is a reflection of the levels of the healthy anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats in our body. These are the healthy fats that are found in the right type of oils and in salmon and seafood, for example. But more importantly, these omega-3 fats are important for the way that our cell walls work, and they're also really important for giving our immune systems, our, they're also really important for giving our immune system instructions as to how to behave, and they tend towards a state of low inflammation. Now, the next tests that I want to review with you are kind of bringing them up onto a different level. In other words, people who need to ask their doctors for these studies might have some particular circumstances, so see if you fall into these categories. The first is if anybody is at risk for diabetes, and I mean with obesity, a family history of diabetes, in men if your waist size is, size is greater than 40 inches, and women if it's greater than 36, this puts you at risk. I'd recommend obtaining what's known as a hemoglobin A1C and a fasting insulin. This is gonna give you and your doctor some great, insight, some great insight into how your body's working, your risk of diabetes, and how well your pancreas is working. The other thing that is associated with fatigue that I like to investigate is kind of a second tier is the possibility of autoimmunity. Now, if you have a strong history of a strong family history of autoimmunity, if you have an autoimmune condition, if you've been really struggling with processes kind of like asthma or chronic rashes or joint pain, these are all clinical conditions that put you at greater risk for having an underlying autoimmune process that has not been diagnosed. The two studies that are most beneficial for looking into the immune system are, a te are two tests. One is known as an ANA, which stands for anti-nuclear antibody, and the other is the rheumatoid factor. And those two studies, if they're negative, are gonna be an umbrella set of studies that are gonna cover the vast majority of autoimmune processes, with the exception of one. And that is um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now this is an autoimmune process against our thyroid gland, and I can tell you it's probably the most common autoimmune condition in our country. The two measurements that help to ascertain uh, Hashimoto's are lab tests known as an anti-TPO, which stands for thyroid peroxidase, and anti-TG, which is anti-thyroglobulin. And I'll give you information in the links below about how you can access these studies. Now, the most important hormone that I believe we have in our body is cortisol, and cortisol levels can be measured over the course of a day. Now, I can tell you that Quest Labs does order a panel in which they check salivary cortisol four times over the course of the day, but it's a bear trying to track this lab down, and it's really possible that your doctor's not gonna wanna do that, but it's so important. Cortisol is the hormone that, that directs all of the other hormones, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, that cortisol is king. So know your cortisol because if you are in a relatively hypocortisol or low cortisol state over the course of the day, that's the primary cause of your fatigue. But importantly is cortisol dysfunction is putting us, putting us at risk for any other, of, any other possibilities of different dysfunctions in our body because cortisol is so important. Now, assuming all of this stuff is normal and you still haven't figured out what's driving your fatigue, depending on where you live, you might consider asking your doctor to look into Lyme studies. And there are some parts of the country in which there's a higher uh, um, prevalence of the ticks that carry Lyme disease. So if you're in the Northeast, uh, Connecticut, uh, Maryland, Pennsylvania, you might consider asking your doctor to do a Lyme screen. And the other infectious cause that I see as being associated with some fatigue is something known as chronic EBV, which is Epstein-Barr virus. Now this is the virus that causes mononucleosis. 
And I can tell you if you go to your doctor and say, check me to see if I've got chronic mono, they're not gonna do the right test. The study that tells us if we have a chronic and active mono in our body is what's known as an early antigen EBV or EA-EBV. Moving on with other categories of conditions that you might consider as sort of a second tier, also consider if there might be some food sensitivities that are contributing to your fatigue. I can tell you without doing a fancy antibody study that the four most common foods that I see associated with um, contributing to fatigue are dairy, eggs, gluten, and corn. So if you find that you're consuming any of these foods regularly, do something simple and just take them out of your diet for a couple of weeks and see how you feel. I've seen any number of patients improve dramatically by taking these foods out of their diet. And lastly, I want you to consider environmental toxins. So if you work in an industrial environment, um, if you're on a well, you might consider having your doctor do some laboratory tests to see if you've been exposed to lead, mercury, arsenic, or cadmium. Again, these are easily obtained tests through a conventional lab. And the last thing that can be contributing to fatigue is a dysfunction in the bowel. Now this is a really, this is a slight more difficult um, thing to consider because in the bowel we can have autoimmune processes like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. But we can also have imbalances and overgrowth of parasites and yeast and bacteria. But this is a little beyond the scope of this video. What I'm trying to do is to give you the test that you should ask of your doctor today to really begin to get on the road to health. Now, if this interests you and a different style of thinking about your health is something that compels you, I would encourage you to look into my website at scottresnickmd.com. Now, this website is really dedicated to fatigue and what it does is it introduces a different style of thinking about how we should be addressing our health. On this website is a free ebook that I'm really proud of. It's not too long, it's nicely illustrated, but it's gonna give you some different perspectives to look at your health with a different set of eyes because when we start to examine our health from different perspectives, we begin to get better. In order to make things a little easier for you, I've actually listed the different uh, tests that I've recommended in this video, along with the different tiers in the description part of the video. Some of these tests are accessible by going to independent labs and just buying these tests online and learning about yourself. And over the course of time, I'm gonna make more and more videos that teach you how to interpret these tests and to really begin to get well. Once again, my name is Scott Resnick. I am making these videos for you because I know you're really smart. I know you want good information. And I know together we can collectively move into a new period of medicine where you, the patient, the healthcare consumer, are more well-educated and contribute more to your healthcare decisions. I'm optimistic that we can do it. And of course, this is a YouTube video, so I think I'm obligated to say, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know what's on your mind and what you think about this, if this has been helpful. Check out my website at scottresnickmd.com and I will see you in another video. Take care.